what is this strange unusual star that I'm looking at? This is actually the fourth brightest star in our sky. And if you come really, really close to it, you will realize that what I'm looking at is actually the planet Jupiter. Welcome to Jupiter and welcome to the video where we're going to talk about the most interesting facts about this beautiful and very, very, very massive, yet unusually cool and unusually strange planet. Welcome to What the Math. And today we're going to be using Space Engine, which is a game that is absolutely free and you can find it in the link in the description below and another game called Universe Sandbox 2 that you can purchase from either Steam or Humble Bundle or directly from their website. Both of these games are available in the description below. So this is Jupiter. This is the fifth planet from the sun and is actually the largest planet in our solar system. So large, in fact, that when I show it to you in Universe Sandbox 2, and if you have never seen it before, you might be really pleasantly surprised about the size of this beautiful object. The radius here is um, close to about um, 70,000 kilometers, which is approximately nine to ten times bigger than our planet Earth. But let's not go uh, into the details of the size just yet, and let's talk a little bit more about the Jupiter as the planet, its discovery, and also uh, some of the features of its atmosphere as well. So first of all, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and uh, talk a little bit about why this planet is uh, so important. For, uh, because of its mass, it actually has a very, very important influence on our solar system. As a matter of fact, the reason why there is no um, planet between Mars and Jupiter, and, and the reason why there's only an asteroid belt there, is because Jupiter is just too massive. It actually was so massive for so long that it ended up um, causing a lot of those rocks that were in that asteroid field to basically fly out into our solar system or collide with itself. So, you could call it a buoy, or you could call it a master of the solar system, but essentially this here is a planet that plays a very important role in the history of our planet as well, because a lot of the things that could have collided with Earth actually were attracted by Jupiter and collided with it instead. And as I mentioned before, this is the fourth brightest object in our sky after the brightest object, which is, of course, the sun. Second brightest object, which is, of course, the moon. And the third uh, brightest object is Venus. This is actually brighter than Mars and brighter than Mercury, even though it's a little bit farther away. And because of its brightness and because of its prominence in the sky, for many years, for many millennia, this was actually a very important planet for many different cultures. For example, for Greeks, this was Zeus, the infamous Zeus. And for people from uh, Germany or for Germanic people in general, uh, that includes people from uh, Sweden, Norway and Denmark, uh, this was actually Thor. So this planet and this star in the sky represented Thor. And even though we actually call this a gas giant, it is not entirely true because at the center of this planet, if I were to uh, actually move through this entire layer of this gas that I'm moving into right now, I would actually find a solid core. I can't really go through it, unfortunately. I kind of get stuck right here. But if I were able to do that, you would find a solid core that is actually more massive than even the planet Earth. As a matter of fact, what's inside Jupiter is bigger and about 20 times as more massive as our planet Earth. And that solid core is surrounded by liquid hydrogen uh, that is liquid because of all of this pressure that the upper atmosphere exerts on it. So, uh, so in between the solid core, there's actually a whole layer of liquid that uh, creates a kind of a metallic hydrogen that is actually responsible for a very strong magnetic field on this planet. Now, this planet is also famous for its storms. As a matter of fact, the biggest storm in our solar system is right here. That's called uh, the uh, giant red spot on Jupiter. It's actually about three times as big as our planet Earth. You can actually place one, two, three Earths in here. And um, many other um, the, of these storms are essentially uh, almost permanent on this planet. Now, this, plan uh, this particular storm is actually not uh, permanent. It's only been uh, there for about 350 years. And this is the one we first discovered as well. But the other storms here are very unpredictable and very, very powerful. As a matter of fact, the wind speed here can be as high as 2,000 kilometers per hour or approximately 1,400 miles per hour. So the uh, winds are here are actually ridiculously fast. 
And one of the reasons why they're so fast is because this planet, as you can see, actually spins relatively fast. As a matter of fact, Jupiter has the shortest day of all of the planets in our solar system, or not just planets, all of the objects as well. And one day on Jupiter is only about 10 hours long. And because it spins so fast, it's not actually a perfect sphere. If you were to look from this angle right here, you would notice that it's actually kind of oblong. It's, uh, it's sort of more long on the sides than it is here. So this is actually actually shorter than this. And that's of course because it's spinning so fast, even though it's very massive and has very strong gravity, the spin creates this type of a shape. And speaking of its mass, uh, it's about uh, 317 times more massive than our planet, th than Earth. And if you were to actually land on the surface of this uh, planet that I'm doing right now, um, you would uh, have a very, very, very high gravity and you would weigh approximately two and a half times more than you do weigh on Earth. So the jumping here is two and a half times more difficult. So, you know, you wouldn't be a very good basketball player if you actually lived here. And the other thing about its atmosphere is that, uh, so if you were to actually descend into it, as you were st uh, start descending, eventually it would get darker and darker and darker. And at some point you would not be able to see the sun anymore because there's just gas there. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really simulate this here, but uh, you would eventually be able to kind of uh, see all of this really thick, really dark fog, and it would actually be a pretty scary place to, to be in because it's basically complete blackness um, uh, somewhere around 1,000 kilometers away from the surface here. And the pressure at those depths is so high that the entire gas that you have on surface actually starts acting and becoming more liquid. So this is why in between um, the upper atmosphere here and the central core, there's actually a lot of really liquidy looking hydrogen. And so just to summarize, uh, there's basically three layers here. There's the central core that's very uh, hard and very, very highly pressurized. There's also kind of an electrically conductive um, middle, which basically consists of liquid hydrogen, which is also the biggest part of this planet. And lastly, on top, there is the planet's atmosphere that contains a lot of helium and a lot of hydrogen, and is basically uh, where we see all of these storms happening. Alright, so now that we've talked about its atmosphere, it's also important to talk about the fact that Jupiter also has the rings, as you can see. This is actually not commonly known that Jupiter, just like every other gas giant, also has rings. Now, it only has four main rings, at least that's what we've found so far. Um, and they're not as prominent and not as beautiful as the rings of Saturn, but they are there. And most of these rings, if you were to go inside of them, uh, would consist of just dust. This is basically uh, the dust that was uh, picked up by Jupiter's gravitational field and is usually basically the leftovers from its moons, from one of its moons that you see orbiting around us as well. And that actually takes me to my next point, the moons of Jupiter, which is actually a very important topic because there are so many of them. Today we know that there's at least 67 moons we've already found. It was a lot less a few years ago, so every year or every few years we find new moons somewhere out there. There's actually possibly moons we haven't discovered yet. But there's, of course, the biggest and most important ones that we'll talk about in this video. We're not going to be able to cover all of them because there is just way too many. Now, I can kind of uh, show you some of them using this button right here. And this is the important ones. These are called the Galilean moons because uh, Galileo discovered them a long time ago. He was the first to find them. And these are, of course, also the very, very large moons that um, have a lot of possible chance of having things like uh, liquid water or possibly even life on them. Now, they are, of course, Io, which is right here, um, very close to Jupiter. This is the um, moon uh, or basically the object in our solar system that is known for its volcanoes. It's the most vol volcanically active um, object in the solar system, and this is what it looks like. And so here is Io. All of these yellow markings are from volcanoes and it suddenly turned red when I came close to it because of the shadow of um, Jupiter but uh, basically all of this is uh, or mostly mo most of this is actually molten lava you can kind of see there's a volcano right there it's all basically hot and very 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 dangerous all right so that was Io let's talk about the next one 
And Europa is actually one of the moons that we really want to investigate because we think that underneath all of this ice is actually liquid ocean and liquid water that may potentially have life. So this is one of those moons that we actually really hope has some kind of a microbial or possibly um, multicellular life that we'll be able to discover one day. And if not, maybe there's some other moon out there that does have life. And this is moon number three, and moon number three is called Ganymede. And what Ganymede is famous for is being the biggest moon in our solar system. It's actually bigger than Mercury um, in terms of radius. Not as massive, but definitely very, very large. So potentially this might be our new home as well. And the fourth Galilean moon is called Callisto. This is a very beautiful moon that we also know very little about, but want to visit and explore. So this is a pretty awesome looking moon that we one day hope to settle on as well. But that's only four out of 67. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you some of them by clicking on this button again just to give you an idea of what else is out there and look at all of these other moons that it has. Now today we believe that most of these were very likely to have been just captured asteroids. They didn't really start as moons but they passed by really close to um, Jupiter and were captured by its gravitational field. But it's also very likely that they were formed by some completely unknown way to us and we don't really know where they came from and we'll not find out for some time. But there's a lot of them and many of them have really unique names like Carpo. Have you heard of Carpo before? I haven't. Now you have. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move into Universe Sandbox 2 and explore a little bit more about Jupiter and I'm going to teach you some more facts about this awesome beautiful planet. And so now we're going to use Universe Sandbox 2 to play around with Jupiter and talk more about some of the facts of this really cool planet with its 67 moons. Now we're going to switch to a different simulation. We're going to click on this and go under solar systems and choose solar systems um, with all planets and all moons because this will allow us to see Jupiter with all of its moons moving across our solar system. And there it is. Look at how beautiful this is. There's so much stuff going on here. It's just crazy. Now, the reason I'm doing it from this simulation is because this will allow us to look at how much energy Jupiter receives from the sun. So it's about this much. It's a number that's right here. It's about five times um, 10 to the power of 10. And interestingly, Jupiter actually creates more energy by itself than it receives from the Sun. So most of the energy that Jupiter creates is because of its huge mass. And because it's so massive, the pressure on the inside creates such a tremendous amount of energy that it's actually really, really, really hot on the inside, even though it's relatively cold on the outside. And that's also one of the reasons why there is so many storms on the surface, because this uh, heat difference creates all of this kind of convection and all of this motion of gases on its surface. And because there is such a large uh, amount of liquid hydrogen on the inside that is also very metallic, um, that actually also creates a very powerful magnetic field that I'm going to enable right here just to show you what it's like. So this is how large it is. It's actually very, very big. It's way, way bigger than uh, the magnetic field on our planet Earth, and it's a lot more powerful as well, which also suggests that if we were to actually... Um, start living on Europa or Callisto, we might be protected from the solar radiation, but of course this doesn't protect us from the radiation that this planet creates itself. And as I mentioned before, it's uh, compared to our planet Earth, it's actually very large. We can Now I can show you uh, how big it is. You could actually fit quite a lot of Earths on, uh, on the inside, and as a matter of fact, if I were to place it right here uh, and make it orbit around Jupiter, you would see that it's, uh, our planet is so tiny in comparison. This is how small it is. And uh, in terms of mass, uh, this is um, almost 318 times the mass of Earth. But it's actually not as uh, dense as Earth. As a matter of fact, if you look at density here, and so the density of Jupiter is only 1.33 grams per centimeter cube, uh, which is just a little bit over water. Um, density of water is 1, this is 1.33, but density of our planet is much higher, it's 5.5 uh, grams per centimeter cube. And that's of course because our planet has a lot more iron on the inside, whereas Jupiter, if you look at its materials, it's mostly basically hydrogen. It's about 98% hydrogen, there's um, quite a lot of helium, and there's just a little bit of rock um, and some other elements on the inside where the core is. And so if you were to actually uh, orbit around Jupiter so close to where we are right now, this is what you would actually see on the surface. But obviously because this planet is so massive, there will be a lot of things going on. There will be a lot of tides, a lot of um, 
uh, mass would be lost to Jupiter because a lot of it would be just dragged from our planet to, to Jupiter because it's more massive and uh, the gravity there is very, very strong. And if you were to actually stand somewhere over here, you would very likely just fall into Jupiter because, once again, the gravity is stronger uh, on Jupiter than it is on Earth. Anyway, so let's keep talking about Jupiter and not about our Earth. So one thing that uh, Jupiter is also famous for is, of course, that uh, that it has no seasons. Its axis of rotation is only about three degrees in comparison to Earth that has axis of rotation of 23.5 degrees. And so here, uh, because it's only three, three degrees, there is actually no seasons, even though the year here lasts uh, about 12 years. So every 12 years, uh, you still get the same kind of a climate, no matter where you are on Jupiter. And uh, to date, eight spacecraft uh, actually visited Jupiter for one reason or another. The first one was um, Pioneer 10. And then we had Pioneer 11, Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Galileo, Cassini, Ulysses, and uh, lastly, New Horizons very recently. And there's another spacecraft headed for Jupiter that will actually arrive here in July of 2016. And that particular spacecraft called the Juno mission will be investigating the moons of Jupiter, specifically Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, and will be looking for um, subsurface oceans that will hopefully one day be able to explore as well. Now, so Jupiter, all we know, is a pretty awesome, pretty cool planet. And uh, in 1994, it actually had a little visitor that we get we get to capture on camera. And you actually have the simulation here in the game as well. It's called shoemaker levi collision with jupiter in 1994 now so here you'll see an actual comet that smacked into jupiter and you can find the videos of this on the internet if you look um, and what happened was because it came close to jupiter because of its gravitational field it sort of got separated into fragments which you see colliding with jupiter and each of them fell onto the planet and created quite a lot of disturbances that we got to observe because its atmosphere actually changed a little bit and there was some remains uh, flying in the atmosphere that we were able Able to photograph. And this of course reinforces the idea I mentioned previously that Jupiter protects our planet from these possible collisions that come from the outer solar system because it's so massive and its uh, gravitation is so much stronger than our planet. It would usually attract uh, possible um, asteroids or possible comets that would be might actually endangering our planet as well. But before we finish this video I actually wanted to talk about one other point. Now as you can see Jupiter almost has like a solar system of its own. It has a lot of different objects orbiting it and it's almost like a miniature sun because it creates so much energy. And that's because it's technically a failed star. If Jupiter had more mass, it would actually become our sun because its composition is exactly or almost exactly the same as our sun. It has mostly hydrogen and helium and had it been more massive, which I'm going to show you right now, we're going to make it more massive. Uh, it would actually turn into a star. Now, what you see happening here is, of course, other objects, its moons colliding with Jupiter because it's gaining more mass. And as it gains more mass, it starts to create even more energy until at some point around the um, mark of about 80 masses of Jupiter, it's going to be so massive that it actually starts its... Oh, oh look at that. It actually changed color. It's going to start its own um, reaction on the inside and turn into a nuclear engine. And it's going to become a star. This usually happens around the mass of 80 to possibly 100 masses of Jupiter. And uh, as you can see, even though the mass is increasing, the actual si um, the size of the actual planet is not changing at all. But it's already sort of big and hot, massive and hot. And that's not just from the collisions that it experienced, it's actually from the fact that it is now creating its own heat on the inside and it's now also glowing. It is now technically known as the brown dwarf and it's about to become um, a red dwarf, an actual star. And there you go, Jupiter as the star, if it had more mass. This happened at around 104 masses of Jupiter, but it, it can happen even earlier. And <laughs> here come the more collisions because it's so, uh, it's actually very, very massive now. And this, of course, would actually turn our solar system into a binary star. So right now, this is a binary star that is going to have a very, very interesting and very unusual orbit where Earth might actually not be habitable anymore because it's going to definitely start orbiting differently. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say about Jupiter and about its moons, about its atmosphere, and about its composition. And hopefully you enjoyed this little simulation and enjoyed uh, all of these different facts I mentioned. 
And before we finish this video, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching and remind you to subscribe if you still haven't because there's a lot more educational videos coming in the future. Also, share this video with your friends or someone who you think may like to learn more about Jupiter and various facts of this awesome giant planet. And don't forget to check out the Space Engine, which is absolutely free, or to purchase Universe Sandbox 2 and support those developers for making such an amazing simulation. And before I finish this video, I would like to also thank two of my first Patreons. I would like to thank Alos Gorsic, I hope you pronounced your name correctly, and also Joseph for being the first awesome Patreons on my Patreon page, which you can also find in the description below. Thank you so much for making this channel better, and thank you for your support. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next video, game you later, and... And hopefully now you know what the Math Jupiter is all about. Thank you for watching, game you later, bye bye.